Now we have the Seven Kingdoms proper out of the way, we can take a look at some of the other areas of Westeros. The Crownlands technically doesn't fall under any of the other kingdoms, so I thought why not give it its own video. Joffrey Baratheon, the slimy Westeros supervillain and false king, speaks with a posh evil southern accent, somewhere between Mr Burns and Commodus from Gladiator. It's not much at all. Please, have another cup. You sure you're great? Yes. Celebrate my name day. Have two, have as much as you like. His brother Tommen, the grown-up version, speaks with a very posh RP accent befitting other royals such as Joffrey or Renly. My mother would like to see her daughter's final resting place. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Grace. That's not possible. Not yet. When will it be possible? When she's fully atoned for her sins. You cut off her hair and marched her naked through the streets in front of the whole city. Marcella Baratheon's an odd one. As a child, she seemed to have a northern twang, but the later version spoke with an accent much like her siblings. I know. About you and Mother. I think the part of me always knew. And I'm glad. More D&D continuity fails. Davos Seaworth is as Geordie as they come, despite hailing from Flea Bottom in King's Landing, in the south. You're not the young man, Salador. And correct me if I'm wrong, most pirates don't grow old. A note for our American viewers, Geordie means from Newcastle. If you've ever had the misfortune of seeing these woeful, well past their prime idiots on your screens, then that's the Geordie accent. Sir Dantus of House Hollard, despite his house colours seeming to be the American flag, Sir Dantus, the lovable drunken clown, speaks with an estuary accent. Sorry, Your Grace. My deepest apologies. That's when he's not spluttering wine everywhere in front of the royal family. Lollis Stokeworth is so wet she should be the sigil of House Tully, but she sounds posher than most of the other characters on the show. Fair play to the actress for giving it her all in her one scene. It is the most important thing, don't you agree? We're going to need pigeon pies. That's what they eat in the capital, don't they? Don't they? Janos Slint, the stalwart, trustworthy captain of the Gold Cloak, speaks with what seems to be a southern accent, but we get some scouse creeping in. Are you drunk? Not have my honour questioned by an imp? Scouse is what people from Liverpool sound like. You know, like the Beatles, or if you hate your life, Google Scylla Black. Megan, the mother of one of Bobby B's many, many bastard children, sounds a bit too well spoken and RP for your average King's Landing prostitute. He wasn't that sort of man, my lord. He just wanted to know if the child was happy. Healthy. Gendry, the blacksmith's apprentice and wielder of a ridiculous fantasy warhammer, speaks with an estuary accent. About my work, first. I was being treated well. I liked it here. His blacksmith master speaks with a nondescript southern accent. As you wish, my lord. Gendry! Olivar, the male prostitute, seems to be the only gay man in King's Landing, lending his services to Oberyn, Loras, and the High Septon, amongst others. Speaks in a plummy RP accent. Hey. Oliver. The fat boy that Arya kills has his lines dubbed in for some reason. Standard southern child actor voice. There she is. What do you want? Want you, wolf girl. Come here. Leave me be. My father's a lord. He'll reward you. She'll reward me. The queen. Stay away! Hot Pie sounds like he could be from 1980s Grange Hill with his estuary TV accent. I've got a rat like you doing with a sword. Maybe he's a little squire. He ain't no squire, look at him. Looks like a girl. Lommy, another orphan from King's Landing, speaks much the same way as Hot Pie up until he gets a needle in the neck. No. You've got to carry me. All right. Rorge's origin is unknown, but we first meet him being transported to the Wall from King's Landing. Speaks in a gruff Cockney accent reminiscent of Bill Sykes from the various Oliver Twist films. Little shit. Get us beer! Viserys Targaryen sounds as posh and evil as Joffrey. I can see why he was killed off early, you can't have two of them running around. Is it true they die with their horses? I wouldn't ask Carl Drogo. 
If you take me for a fool, I take you for a king. Daenerys Targaryen sounds very upper class. Must have had some expensive governesses while in exile. We will lay siege to the capital surrounding the city on all sides. Cersei will have the Iron Throne, but no food for her army or the people. Rhaegar Targaryen gets few lines in a flashback, but he sounds like royalty. She is mine. From this day until the end of my days. Cersei's handmaiden, Bernadette, not only copies Her Grace's Mr. Spock haircut, but also her accent, or tries to. At once, Your Grace. The head pyromancer has a great voice like a wizened old sorcerer. The actor used to do the audiobooks, and they're definitely worth checking out. No, I have not conducted this experiment. It, it could well be true. The substance burns so hot, it melts wood, stone, even steel. High Septon won before having his arm ripped off by starving city folk spoke in a pompous, posh accent reminiscent of Mace Tyrell. May the crown give her wisdom. May the warrior give her courage. His successor was much the same, if not a tad more pious sounding. As the High Septon of the Faith of the Seven, I give voice to the will of the gods and am their foremost servant in this world. An insult to me is an insult to the gods. An assault on my person is an assault on our very religion. You were assaulted. I was, by those fanatics who call themselves sparrows. The High Sparrow speaks in an upper-class RP accent as befitting a man who has basically become the Pope of this setting. The God's judgment is fierce, but also fair. Overall, I am awarding the Crown Lands a well-deserved seven King's Landings out of seven. Join me next time for more of this enjoyable nonsense when we cover the Citadel and the Maesters in general. Bye then.